That's me. All right. So this one, guys, more than anything, uh, everybody want to be a bodybuilder, but no one want to lift heavy weights, right? But it's the same thing for biohacking. You need to know what you're putting in your body. You need to do your research. And like this one in particular, methylene blue can uh, induce serotonin syndrome. That's not a good thing. That can be actually fatal. So please pay attention. Please share this with your friends. Anyone that brought up methylene blue before, I remember when I found out that it was a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. I'm like, hmm, I want to I want to dive deep into this one because this one can end you up in a bad spot. And if you've any of you've played with psychedelics, you know that Venisteriopsis copii, aka ayahuasca, is an MAO inhibitor, and you got to be really really careful with that. So we're going to talk about today. So what am I? We're going to talk about this methylene blue. So it's mechanism of action. How does it work? What is it indicated for? What's it contraindicated? What's its dose? And what are some side effects? So first off, we jump into the mechanism of action. When we think of methylene blue, we want to think about one of its main indications, and that's in met hemoglobinemia. And that's basically when your iron on your hemoglobin gets oxidized and you're unable to carry oxygen. And what happens when you can't carry oxygen, right? You turn blue. What's funny in naturopathic medicine, there's a type of medicine, very controversial called homeopathy, which means like cures like. And so what's interesting in the state of being turned blue, you can give someone this blue dye and it helps out. And that's what methylene blue, it helps. It works as an antioxidant to reduce the, uh, the, the oxidized iron back so that it can be used. So it is an antioxidant. Uh, it was previously used as an antiseptic before penicillin. I believe the dye was found in the late 1800s and it was used for a wide variety of things and clothing and other things because it was this really cool blue dye. And then they found out that it had a lot of uh, medical uses. Another popular use is to increase blood pressure. So methylene blue inhibits nitric oxide. A lot of you know what that is. And this guanylate cyclase, right? This decreases cyclic GMP and vascular smooth muscle relaxation. What does that mean, right? So there's a lot of double negatives in there. When we think about nitric oxide, we think about blood vessel dilation, which is often a good thing, especially when we're working out, we want a lot of blood. The problem is this can decrease blood pressure. So, so someone who's in shock, if they've had a lot of bleeding, um, if they passed out there, they have no vascular tone and therefore they can't get blood anywhere. And so methylene blue actually does the opposite, actually helps vasoconstrict and bring vascular tone so that you can get blood to the areas that you need blood in. So sometimes vasodilation is good. Sometimes vasoconstriction is good. So one of the things we think about this then is with the brain, if we get a lot of blood flow to the brain, especially if there's a leaky blood brain barrier, uh, you have neural inflammation, this does seem like the methylene blue can help with this by reducing the nitric oxide. So, but what's the reason most of y'all are here? You're here for the nootropic biohacking thing. And I think about all these things always backwards. So when we think about methylene blue, it has a lot of research that is being done in Alzheimer's and dementia. So it's kind of one of those things, well, if it can help reverse degeneration, shouldn't it help prevent it? Not always, but uh, very controversial with methylene blue. Uh, it seems like it had some steam for as far as uh, uh, research studies, and it just seems kind of like it kind of petered out. Uh, but there are still plenty of people in the biohacking world that are are using it, and they, you know, talk talk about a lot of benefits. But we could really use quite a bit more research on it. There's really not a whole lot of long term studies. So again, why are you here? You're here for it's most likely for its nootropic and biohacking abilities. So let's think chicken or the egg thing. Kind of what I talked about earlier. The methylene blue is going to help you carry more oxygen. Well, what does oxygen do? Oxygen is super important for helping us produce ADP, specifically um, in an oxygenated state, right? We get to the final part of producing ADP is the electron transport train. And in particular, it seems like mito the methylene blue increases this mitochondrial function complex number four by 30%. So it's going to help increase our oxygen consumption and usage. Well, where do a lot of the first products that the that we get that end up in the electron transport train come from glucose, right? Glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and eventually electron transport chain. So it does seem like methylene blue does help with glucose uptake and use. And we all know how beneficial that is to 
have our blood glucose optimized in a good spot in a good space. And we know long-term that helps prevent with Alzheimer's and dementia. So there does seem to be some neuroprotective components to methylene blue. There's also some studies showing that it improves memory and increases and improves reaction time. It also delays and reverses senescence. Senescence is basically the process of the, how a cell kind of ages and then just goes dormant. And then it just becomes like cellular garbage and we have to get rid of it. And methylene blue helps prevent that. Also, a lot of studies showing for or working on showing antidepressant and its ability for uh, to uh, work on anxiety. And again, from a biohacking perspective, you're probably like, well, if this produce decreases nitric oxide, is not a bad is that a bad thing? Kind of like I said before, it really kind of depends on you know probably not the best thing to take right before the gym. Uh, I have taken it before before going to the gym, and it does seem like it increases my um, aerobic capacity. Um, but probably not the best idea if you're wanting to do some weights. Uh, one of the other mechanism actions, I should have put this on its own line. It's just an MAOI. That's an monoamine oxidase inhibitor. So serotonin and dopamine and epinephrine get broken down by this enzyme along with many others. And in the past, before a lot of the modern day, um, antidepressants and, um, uh, drugs, we used to use these MAO inhibitors. The problem is they have side effects, specifically one called serotonin syndrome, which I said before can kill you. Uh, basically it's just a buildup of a ton of serotonin and, then, and, um, it, it, heart rate goes up and it just not good overall, not good. So that's why you want to stay away from this. And specifically, that's why you don't want to be meth, mi mixing methylene blue with any other type of psych drugs, especially this is why you need to be working with professional. Again, this is not medical advice. This is just information purposes only. And I, honestly, I hope this reaches people so they don't go and do something stupid. Um, see, I talked about this picture a little bit. Here's your mitochondria. And, and basically what happens for a lot of you, I, I don't know, again, who, who learns what in biology anymore. But again, the last step of the electron transport chain is you make this gradient of electrons and then they 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 go through the gradient and then they produce more ADP. So overall methylene blue is going to help us produce more ADP, which is a good thing. Again, what are the indications? Most famously for the met hemoglobinemia, again, when our hemoglobin are uh, able to carry oxygen, that usually comes from drugs and toxicity specifically. Um, there's one drug, this I, a phosphamide. Um, I looked that one up that's used, it causes neurotoxicity. It's really used in tumors for, uh, for younger children, usually in pediatrics. So really not cool. So glad that this, uh, methylene blue can help, help prevent the, the neurotoxicity. And that also comes from CO2 poisoning. Uh, like I said before, used in shock when you have low blood pressure to bring that up, uh, used in dyes for like removals of polyps and other minor surgeries. When I brought up methylene blue, I had a patient say, oh, yeah, yeah, I use that in my fish tank. I was like, oh, again, not something I really knew about, but it helps uh, kill funguses, which makes sense. As also, it kills a lot of other microbes as an antiseptic. Previously, it was used in cyanide poisoning and UTIs. Uh, it, it was kind of uh, moved away from, from that. But what's also interesting, I, maybe I'll talk about it later, is that there seems to be a lot of the elderly populations get UTIs, uh, especially in like nursing homes. And uh, unfortunately, if they're not being taken care of or paying attention to, a lot of them don't even know it. And it ends up causing uh, neurodegenerative processes, specifically Alzheimer's and dementia, and then usually depression from having chronic UTIs that they don't know about. Um, what are some maybes? You know, malaria, it was actually a very popular treatment in malaria. And it due to its antioxidant capacity, it seems like it's able to reduce glutathione, one of the body's main antioxidants. And so it makes sense to me. Methylene blue would, would make sense to me in a lot of different diseases that like with malaria or anything that's affecting the blood, helping carry oxygen. Uh, bipolar, Alzheimer's, dementia, cancer. There's a lot of just a handful of studies actually just showing it working uh, or attempting to show that it works in those areas. The recent virus, uh, interestingly enough, there was a couple of studies. One in particular, there was a, a group of people, I think about 2,500 people who were on methylene blue and it, the prophylactically, meaning that they were on it and then they didn't get the recent virus. Very interesting. Yeah, but which makes sense too, when you have the recent virus that it uh, decreases your 
oxygen saturation and your respiration rate. So these studies showed that basically taking methylene blue increased their oxygen sat and decreased the respiratory rate. It was also used for and has been used for neutralizing heparin, a blood thinner, and then also for a priapism. And if you don't know what a priapism is, a priapism is when you have an erection for far too long. Uh, that can happen from taking too much Viagra or Cialis or, uh, you know, funny story. I used to work at a clinic and we would actually inject prostaglandin straight into the uh, straight into the penis that helps. And sometimes those guys would get priapisms. And so you can use methylene blue to uh, block the nitric oxide, and make the erection go away. So again, a lot of these things I kind of talked about earlier, if they're used in neurodegenerative diseases, then maybe they can help not only prevent them, but also basically increase our cognition. Contraindications. Okay. This is when we don't use it. Right. And basically anytime you're using any psychiatric meds, I would, you need to go talk to a healthcare professional and specifically anything messing with dopamine or serotonin, you need to stay away from methylene blue. Uh, we'll get into doses later, kind of like what's safe and what's not safe, but you know, any of your SSRIs, SNRIs, basically anything you think mess that's messing with your brain. Uh, our neurotransmitters in general probably should stay away from these until you get crystal clear evidence of, you know, what the heck you're doing. Again, smaller doses. Uh, I won't even, I don't even, I won't even go down it. Uh, but again, serotonin syndrome can be fatal. Another interestingly enough uh, thing to consider is what's called G6PD glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. It's basically an enzyme that works on your, your ability to like buffer with your blood and, and uh, this also happens in um, ozone therapy, high dose vitamin C therapy. You want to make sure that you don't have this. So you need to get a blood test. Uh, again, that can cause a lot of problems. I think, again, even maybe even as far as death, if you're not paying attention. Uh, anytime liver and kidney function, you always want to double check that you know what you're doing. And then, and specifically in Heinz body anemia, again, any, as you can tell, anything with it's impairs the body's ability to carry oxygen. Side effects. One of the more interesting ones they get from patients like, um, you know, they don't really think about it, but you're, it's a blue dye. So it will turn your pee blue or green, which is interesting. And a lot of people don't really think about it, but there are, I've had people freak out and they're like, oh my God, you know, and then when I tell them about them, like I, Say I put them on them and I talk, I talk to, to them a couple of weeks later and they're like, Hey, my pea color, color turned. I'm like, yeah, that's normal. Don't worry about it. Uh, again, side effects. Well, well, I didn't even, I didn't really talk about what serotonin, serotonin syndrome is like. Basically it's, it's like an hallucination for lack of better term. It's like overdosing on psychedelics. You're just confused. You can get headache, balance issues, dilated peop, uh, pupils, uh, GI disturbances, your blood pressure drops, heart rate goes up overall, just not a good circumstance. Uh, again, any type of drug, you can have allergic and anaphylactic response again, which is really, really bad. Uh, I talked a little bit about the G6PD, which does cause hemolysis, meaning that your red blood cells pop and then you can't carry oxygen. Another bad thing. And then some of the normal side effects, sweating, feeling hot or cold, maybe a little bit of a dizziness. And again, I talked earlier, there's not a whole lot of real long-term studies for safety. So something to definitely take into consideration. What's also really weird, um, well, first we'll talk about the dose and the hormetic effects. So dose-wise, what are some normal dose? As low as four milligrams, upwards to 250 milligrams orally. Uh, a lot of times you have met hemoglobinemia or, or shock, or a lot of times when this is used in a hospital setting, uh, you're using it through an IV where we're looking at doing about one to two milligrams per, per kilogram. And so when you think 220 pound man, that's hundred kilograms. So doing about hundred to 200 milligrams, uh, via IV, and that can be over five to 30 minutes. Half-life actually seems pretty similar in both the oral and the IV form about a five to seven hour half-life. So very similar to something like caffeine. Uh, when we get to some of these other studies and for instance, with malaria, they're using super high doses, right? When we're talking about one to two milligram per kilogram for something like methemoglobinemia and malaria, they're using 36 to 72 milligrams per kilograms 
over three days. So I saw a study that had orally 390 milligrams twice a day. Again, you need to be working with someone if you're consider using this because you know, you can get serotonin syndrome. So it's weird how the doses are kind of all over the place. Uh, Alzheimer's UTI prevention. I saw 60 milligrams three times a day. Uh, and I, I actually already talked about the interesting fact about UTI neuro and, and uh, causes depression specifically in, in elderly people. So overall, again, work with a medical professional. It does seem safe when you're sitting at that two milligrams per, per kilogram uh, uh, spot, but from what I found, anything over five milligrams per kilogram can be, um, can be fatal. And again, that, that comes with a wide variety of things. For instance, like I have a COMT and MTHFR mutation, uh, those impair my ability to break down a lot of the neurotransmitters. So something for someone like me, I'm probably at a higher risk for, for something like serotonin. I talked about cytochrome P450s. Those are other ways that we, uh, we detox and you, you have SNPs for those enzymes that the code for how well they are produced. And then I actually too have another thing called Gilbert's, which uh, impairs my abilities for a uh, phase two detox called glucuronidation, uh, which also can impair estrogen metabolism and some other stuff. One thing that was interesting is this has a hormetic effect, meaning that more is not necessarily better. So I found a couple of different studies that basically showed there was kind of a sweet spot with it. And, uh, this happens too with high dose vitamin C at low doses as an antioxidant at high doses with vitamin C is a prooxidant, meaning that it actually causes problems. And then your body upregulates glutathione, um, that's in vitamin C, but specifically with this methylene blue, there seems to be this kind of sweet spot. Now I found a couple of studies on mice. Uh, this first one here just showed their, how well they did, uh, working out. And there seemed to be again, like four milligrams per kilogram seemed to be kind of a sweet spot. Uh, more actually did not do better. And then in particular with, um, memory enhancing, they actually showed higher, too high of doses actually cause amnesia, which I didn't forget. And then what was this one over here? Methylene brew, uh, oxidative metabolism and memory retention. Again, it just, there's another kind of, uh, chart over here that kind of shows you that it, uh, there's a sweet spot. Um, I think that's kind of it. Uh, here are all these sources. Again, I, this is an MLA formatted. I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. You can go in there and find all this stuff if you want to have fun with it. Uh, I am interested if anyone out there has used methylene blue, let me know, leave a comment uh, below. What doses have you used? What things have you noticed? Was it good? Was it bad? Side effects, all that stuff. So if you made it this far and you want to help out some of your friends and help out the channel, please, you can go ahead and like the button or hit the like button. If the, the video you liked it, don't like it if you don't like it. Uh, and if you'd like to sit around, uh, stick around, hit the subscribe button. You can hit the bell notification to make sure that you stay up to date with, uh, all the videos that I'm producing. Uh, so please again, share with your friends, other biohackers out there. And again, I'm always really open-minded, uh, to creating content and, and try and do my best to interact with people. So if you use these or other substances, I always like learning about stuff. I learned so much from my comments, uh, from interacting with people. And, and th that's how I learned about a lot of different things like methylene blues, a lot of the peptides, people go, Hey, have you heard of this? And I just love diving into it. Uh, so again, other places you can find me on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, so again, thanks everyone for sticking around. Uh, until next time, stay vigilant, my friends, and God bless.